Come on, tell the Lord thank you in the house tonight. Come on and bless him tonight. Come on and bless the Lord tonight. Amen. Amen. I don't care about what you've been through these last past few days. Come on and bless the Lord in this house on tonight. Amen. He's worthy of all the glory. He's worthy of all the honor and all the praise on tonight. Amen. It may be raining on the outside, but amen. We got a roof over our head to give God some praise. Come on and bless him. Bless him. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, hallelujah. I don't know about y'all, but I just feel good. I've been feeling good all day. Hallelujah. The Lord is so good. He's so good. He's so good. He's so good. Amen. Amen. I just thank him for all that he's done. Amen. I thank him for what he's about to do in the kingdom. Amen. And I'm just excited all the way down in my spirit. Amen. I'm, I'm excited for what he's a, about to do in the kingdom. Amen. I thank him for kingdom maturity on tonight. I thank God for all of you that are in the house on tonight. And I just believe God that God has got something greater in store for the house of bread. But you know, we got to come with a made up mind that I'm going to go forth and see what the end is going to be. I'm not going to let nothing hold me back. I don't care what's going on in my life, God. It's for you that I live and move and have my being. Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together. Woo! Amen. 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 I'm just thankful. You may have a seat. Have a seat. Have a seat. Amen. Amen. I'm just excited tonight. Amen. Amen. Just about God Himself. Amen. Amen. Not because He's done, not, not that He done something miraculous for me today, but by me just waking up today was good enough for me to give Him praise. Amen. I was closed in my right mind. That's enough for me to give Him praise. I wasn't aching in my body. Didn't have a headache. Was able to dress my own self. Able to put my own. That's enough for me to give him praise. That's enough for me to give him the glory, the honor, and the praise. This is enough. Amen. So many times we don't want to bless the Lord until he does something miraculous in our life. But baby, just, just by you breathing, that's a miracle. You should be able to give God a praise just because you're able to breathe on your own. You don't have an oxygen tank hooked up to you. You don't have no machine breathing for you. You able to breathe on your own. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Lord. God is good. Yes. Amen. How many of you God is good? All the time. Mm -hmm. Amen. I've been here since about 540. And, mm. Amen. I thought I was coming down here to study, but I've been in prayer. Amen. And I tell you, I tell amen. you, with God, I mean, when God does the work. Yes. God. Amen. When God does the work. Amen. Yes. He don't have to do it. Uh -huh. Amen. Amen. I might have you to come cut my yard. You might miss a few spots. All right. Amen. But when God Good does God. the work, amen. amen, he does a complete work. Amen. 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 So how can you, how y'all feel tonight? Amen. 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 You know, we come to church and we don't say nothing. But we get to the football game and we running and howling. <laughs> come on, open up that set. Tell them I thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. How do you know? If you ever want to go to the first and quiet people, Lord say, just, just try going to church. Amen. Amen. We be loud everywhere else. Amen. But we can't give God the glory Amen. in his house. Amen. 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 I apologize for my voice, but I've been praying for the last past hour. Amen. Been shouting and screaming and running <laughs> all by myself. And I'm pretty sure some of the cars rolled by looking at me. I seen the other gifts and creeping about that. What in the world they want to doing? But to God be the glory. Yes. Amen. Amen. I just thank him for all that he's doing. Amen. For what he's about to do. We're going to be in the, uh, the book of uh, Galatians tonight. Amen. Amen. Still dealing with kingdom maturity. Father, we thank you right now in the name of Jesus for your word on tonight. Thank you for what you're about to do in the kingdom, God. We cancel every assignment, every attack of the enemy, God, against our minds right now. And we lose your anointing afresh, God, in this place, Father. We thank you, Lord God, for the people that you have set for this ministry, Lord God. To go forth, Lord God, to take this world and take it for the kingdom, God. For you told me that the kingdom is never violent, but the violent take it by force. And God, we ready to take back everything that the enemy has stolen from us. And Lord, we bless you on tonight, and we give you all the glory, the honor, and the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We say amen. 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 I am just, I am just excited.
excited tonight. I'm blessed. And I thank God for all that he's doing. Amen. Amen. Been up since 4.30 this morning. And how many of you know I ain't tired yet? Amen. 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 I just thank God for his grace yes. and his mercy. Amen. 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 Dealing with the fruits of the Spirit. Amen. 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 So how many of you know that dealing with kingdom maturity and dealing with the things that God has called us to in these last past six weeks and kingdom maturity, we're going to have to be able to walk in the fruit. Mm. I didn't say fruits. Fruit. I said fruit, fruit of the Spirit. Fruit. And if you see some typos in my lesson, please overlook them because there's some typos because I was typing real fast. I typed like about 10 pages of notes Amen. tonight. So if you see some typos, overlook them. And I'll be able to explain everything that I'm talking about tonight. But dealing with kingdom maturity. And as we go forth and continue to move forth and talking about it's time to grow, dealing with Philippians 3, 13 and 14, kingdom maturity, we're going to have to have some, some fruit down on the inside of us. And I mean some fruit that's going to remain. Yes. Some fruit that's going to help us grow. Yes. Some fruit that's going to help us to mature in some things in the kingdom of God. Yes. And we're going to talk about some of these things tonight. And how many do, how many of you know how many fruit there are of the Spirit? I'm write that for you. Amen. 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 And you guys, there's nine fruit of the Spirit. And we all, not everybody, but most of us are dealing or having some part of these fruits in us tonight. And some of us need to grow in some of these. Uh -huh. And whatever this lesson is dealing with you about, when you see it, Lord, I need to work in this area. Lord, I need to work in this area. Put a mark by, by it and begin to pray about it. Because God, more than anything in this ministry, we're not here to, to lash out. We're not here to talk about nobody. We're here to grow us up. Amen. Amen. So yeah, that we amen. can grow. Mm -hmm. So that we can go out and help somebody else along the way. Yeah. Amen. Mm -hmm. And that's what God is telling us. We're gonna, we want to grow up people in the kingdom. Mm -hmm. It's time to grow. Somebody say it's time to grow. It's time, time to grow. It's time to grow I'm continually. To grow. And this, I think this is one part of my life that I, I think that I will never grow up in. Because being a Christian, being a woman of God, in the kingdom of God, working the kingdom of God, walking at my own soul salvation, walking in kingdom maturity, I'm yet learning every day something new about God. When I get in the word, I always find something new. And I'm going to put a challenge on y'all. After Bible study tonight, we're going to talk about some things. Because, you know, we can get in the word. And uh, we can talk about the word and talk about the fruits and talk about certain things. But God said, now I want you to put a mandate on the body of Christ. And he said, those that are ready to go forth, they're going to follow pursuit and they're going to do this. But we believe God for what he's about to do. Amen. 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 So let's look at Galatians tonight. And we're going to start with that 22nd verse. And I want somebody to read 22. And go all the way down to 26. Whoever we want to read it tonight, I want you to read it. Amen. If you have a different translation, I want you to read it in King James first. And if we have a different translation tonight, I want you to read it in a NIV or Amen. NSV or ESV, whatever. If we have two translations in the house. I have King James. Well, I have more than one. Yeah. I have like, yeah, King James. Okay, what you have? King James. Everybody got King James? Let me get it. I have another translation. You got another translation? Get another translation. NIV or international version? Okay. Yeah. That we're going to read this thing. I was intended to bring our parallel Bible that has four different uh, translations in it, but I forgot to bring it tonight. So if you have the King James, why don't you read the King James? Somebody. And, um, and was unknown by faith mm -hmm. unto the churches of Judea. No, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Galatians 5. Oh. Galatians 5, 22 through 26. 5. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. That's okay. One. That's all right. Galatians 5. That's okay. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, and faith, meekness, temp temperance, temperance, temperance. against such there was, is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affliction, affections, affections and lust. Mm -hmm. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. Go to 26. Mm -hmm. okay. Let us not be uh, desirous. desirous or vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. Amen. Different translation. NIV. Amen. <clears throat> but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, 
faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Those who be belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh. With Hold it right there. Those that belong to God. Mm -hmm. Those that belong to God. It's going to do what now? Mm -hmm. Crucify what? Crucify the flesh okay. with its passions and desires. With its what? Passions and desires. Passions and desires. Mm -hmm. Okay, go ahead. Since, since we live by the Spirit. Oh, Jesus, we live by what? The Spirit. Mm. Jesus. Let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited. Oh, Jesus. Provoking and envying each other. Read that last verse one more time for me. Let us not become conceited. Conceited. Provoking. Provoking. And envying each and other. Envying each other. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Mm. On tonight, God was just dealing about kingdom maturity. Yes. And we're just going to go through these nine fruits. Yes. And I want y'all to join in with me because I'm going to ask y'all some questions. And we're going to talk about this thing. Amen. And I promise you we're going to be out here by 8 o'clock. If we don't finish these nine fruit, we'll pick it up on next Tuesday. And in, in, in kingdom maturity, you're going to have to learn how to operate and walk your life out in the fruit of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. Dealing with kingdom maturity, there are going to be some things that you will encounter that will knock you down, knock you out, and, and, to keep, and will keep you out of operating. In the fruit of the spirit that God has allowed, has given us so freely to operate in. It says in that first, and I mean the next paragraph says, in this, in this study, I have looked at the fruit of the spirit, and I want you to ask yourself, am I walking in the fruit of the spirit? Mm -hmm. You gotta say it out loud, but ask yourself that. Mm -hmm. Am I walking in the fruit of the spirit? Because if you're walking in the fruit of the spirit, and we get down in these in these loves and kindness and gentleness. Somebody gonna say I was, I was saying I was y'all last week. Lord, help me, <laughs> help me, Jesus. So God, he, he wants us to walk in these things. Do you know that God, the Father, wants to transmit and impart these nine specific fruits of the Holy Spirit into our personality? That means God wants us to have these fruits so bad that it's a way of life for us. Yeah. It's going to be part of my character. Yeah. It's going to be a part of my personality. It's going to be a part of the way I things I, the way I work out in the kingdom of God. It's going to be a part of me as if I put get up and put my clothes on every day. As I get up and brush my teeth every day. Get up and comb my hair every day. That's how so important God wants these fruits yeah. to be operating in yeah. our life. Oh, he wants them in there. So God wants all of us to enter into that true sanctification process with him so that he can begin the process of molding, shaping, transforming us in the, in the express image of his son, Jesus Christ. He wants to make us into a better and more holy people. And how many are striving to be better? Amen. 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 I'm striving to be on time more. Amen. I'm striving to be more loving. I'm striving to be more studious about what God has given me. Being more prayerful. Being more thankful. Being more worshipful. I'm trying to do everything that I know that I can do on my part. Then when I do everything that I know I can do on my part, then God's going to add the rest. So we got to do these things. He wants to make us better and more holy people. He wants to transform us by what? Renewing our minds. And that's Romans 12 and 1. Can anybody quote, quote Romans 12 and 1? Off the top of your head. I beseech you be able to work. By the mercies of God. By the mercies of God that you renew your mind. Oh, that you, that you, wait a minute. I beseech you be able to work. By the mercies of God. That you that you present, present your body as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable of that which unto God, God, which is the your perfect reason, which of the reasonable service. You say perfect service. I think that's a different translation. It says perfect uh -huh. service. Amen. Uh -huh. And say, and, and, go ahead. And be not conformed to this world, uh -huh. but be ye transformed uh -huh. by the renewing of, of your, your mind. Amen. Okay. Be ye transformed. Romans twelve one and two. God wants us transformed. 
And the only way our minds are going to be transformed, dealing with kingdom maturity, mm -hmm. as we begin to walk in the fruit of the Spirit, our minds got to be yes. renewed. Yes. Yes. I can't just come just one time on Sunday or just on Tuesday and think that I'm going to live a same life. Yes. Because I, that's not enough word for me to have down on the inside of me to fight off the enemy. If I come to church once a Sunday or once a month and then think that I got enough to carry me over for four or five months, it's not going to work. So we got to come and get our minds renewed. He wants to put right thinking in our thought process. So you have to be willing to work to work in cooperation with the Holy Spirit. Once he begins to start the sanctification process within you. So you have to be a what? Amen. You have to be a what? Willing vessel. It's right there in your paper. You have to be a willing vessel. So that means I have to be a willing participant. If I want God to do some things in my life, so that means I'm going to have to get in the Word more. I'm going to have to do my part because He's not going to open up the sky and just pour everything down in my mind. There are some things that I'm going to have to do. And one of those things I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to get in the Word. I'm going to have to pray. I'm going to have to fast. And I'm going to have to talk to God. That's, not, that's my part. That I know that I have to do. So I've got to be a willing vessel. I've got to seek Him. I've got to talk to Him. I've got to make a relationship with Him. And He said, I draw nigh to Him. He's going to what? He's going to draw nigh to me. So that means I may go over and get close to Sister Joy. She may move over a little bit. But I tell you, the closer I get to God, the more he's going to get closer to me. The closer I get to God, the closer he's going to get to me. But I may go stand over here next to Michael. Michael may move over here. But when I get close to God, I don't have to worry about him moving. The closer I get to him, the closer he's going to get to me. So I got to be a what? A willing vessel. I got to be with it. I got to have a made up mind. I got to know that I know that, Lord, if I'm willing to do this thing, if I'm willing to walk in these gifts, if I'm willing to walk out this kingdom maturity, you go help me. I can't do it by myself. I can't make it by myself. But if I make up in my mind that if I'm going to walk out in kingdom maturity and I'm the willing vessel, then I know that you go help me. Somebody say, I got to be a willing vessel. I got to be a willing vessel. We have got to be a willing vessel. Your job is to get into the Word. Find out exactly what God is going to want to change about you. Okay, that's it. Many times we go to God by somebody else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Lord, she, oh, Lord. She just, I don't know, she just ain't, mm, Lord. Yeah, she knows she ain't got to have that on. She ain't got to say that. Lord, what about you giving both parties talking about you? Yeah, yeah, man. Lord, it's me. It's me. It's not my brother. It's not Elder Battle. It's not my sister, God. Lord, it's me. Talk to me. Because you know what? I want to get perfect in this thing. I want to walk out this thing in maturity. And the only way that I'm going to be able to walk out this thing in maturity is I got to be a willing person. I got to be willing to do that which God needs me to do. Praise the Lord, woman of God. To do in his life, in our life. Somebody say willing vessel. Willing vessel. Amen. Amen. We got to be a willing vessel. Amen. And know for God to do the things that he want to do in our lives. Amen. We need to find out exactly what godly quality God wants to put in us, put on us, into our personality. What qualities he will want you to try to put away. Mm. Okay. So, if I'm dealing with kingdom maturity... While I'm putting on some things in God, mm -hmm. I'm going to take off some things. All right, amen. All right. So that means I'm not going to be able to say I'm walking in key to maturity and doing everything that God say and still dropping like it's hot. Okay? No, I can't do that. You still <laughs> saying, backing that thing up. You know, I, I can't do that. But I'm saying I'm a willing vessel. Right. If I'm walking in key to maturity, okay. saying it's time for me to grow up, then I can't cuss out somebody when they cut in front of me and, right. and, and on the highway. Or when somebody's talking about me, I can't get in my flesh because I'm working on what? Kingdom maturity. Kingdom maturity. So when I begin to put on these fruit, I know that there's some things that's going to fall apart. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Yes, it is. Because God going to show me how to love right. Mm -hmm. He's going to show me how to walk right. Mm -hmm. He's going to show me how to talk right. Mm -hmm. 
So there are some things that we're going to have to put on, and there are some things that we're going to have to put away. Somebody says, some things I'm going to have to put away. Some things I'm going to have to put away. We have to put them away. And you know, and I think that's one reason why we have such a such a hard time in the kingdom of God is that we want God and we want the world too. Mm-hmm. All right. Mm-hmm. I mean, Lord, I do. I, I want all of you got to give me. As long as I can bring Bobo along with me. All right. Come on. If I can bring on my sister, sister no mind along with me, then Lord, I'm gonna I'm gonna do what you called me to do. But we cannot do that. There are some things you're gonna have to put away. Like I said on Sunday, you're going to have to cut some people out of your circle. All right, all right. You're going to have to cut them away. Say the word spirit. I'm still on the first page, y'all. The word spirit is, the, is capitalized. That S is capitalized, which means these nine fruits are coming directly from the Holy Spirit, not from ourselves. What this means is that God's love, God's peace, God's joy, God's goodness can start to be transmitted up into my personality. Yeah. And I'm making that thing personal. These are his divine attributes. Uh. So if I'm walking and saying I'm walking in love and I got a stinky attitude, am I walking in love? No. I say I'm walking in love and I see you somewhere tomorrow and I go the other way. And then you come around and the other and say, girl, how you doing? And you say, I didn't see you. You know you saw me. Am I walking in love? No. no. Divine attributes and personalities, qualities that will start to move into the core of our personality. Down in my belly, there's something that's going to begin to move down in my spirit. When I make up in my mind, kingdom maturity, Lord, that's what I want. There's something God is going to do. Think about the ramification of this. That God the Father himself is allowing us to share in a part of his divine nature. Allowing the Holy Spirit to transmit and impart these divine qualities right up into our soul and our personality. Mm -hmm. Just think how God is allowing us to share Mm -hmm. and partake in some of the things that he has. Let's look at some of the fruit tonight and see what God wants to impart unto us. And you know, there may be some of these fruits that you may not be operating in now. And if you're not operating in, we're going to start operating in. Because with God's help, we're going to be able to do what? All things. And that, that's what the word says. Through God, I can do all things, right? Right. So right. we're going to be able to do that. He said, if, there's, if there is something that you know that you need to work on, mark it, circle it. It's your paper. Take it home. Pray about it. So God can be a blessing to you. The first one is what? Love. Amen. Somebody tell me what love is. Can anybody tell me what the Greek word is? No, don't you. Don't you. Agape. Right. Amen. <laughs> Agape. So what does Agape mean? Agape. Unconditional love. Unconditional love. So that means it's not no eradicated love. It's a love from heart to heart, from brother to sister, yeah. in the kingdom. Yeah. Love. Yeah. Love. Unselfish, benevolent concern for another, brotherly concern, the object of brotherly concern or affection. Mm-hmm. And if I had to, as I put down, if I had to really rank all the fruit of the Spirit, I think number love would be the number one thing yes. of all because he got number love, number one. Yes. Because yes. if we get our love walk right, everything else is going to fall in place. Amen. 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 If we get our love walk right, if we walk in, I mean, true, divine, the love, if the love of God really, really reign in our hearts the way he wanted to reign, mm-hmm. everything he has, all the other fruits is going to fall in line. Yes. Everything is going to fall in its place. And this is why I think it may have been missing above the scriptures. What does John 3, 16 say? Look at your paper. Amen. God loves us that much. He loved us so much that he was unselfish. He was unselfish and sent his son to die for us while we was what? Yet sinners. He sent Christ to die for us. One of the main messages that come through loud and clear from studying the Bible, the extreme importance that God is placing on that everyone learns how to do what? Love him. I got to learn how to love him. Yes. You know, how you... We, we, when you date, you know, I love that bird sight. Mm-hmm. And 
and all of that. We got to learn how to love God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We got to learn. And the more we spend time with Him, the more I spend time in that Word, the more I spend time in prayer, the more I spend time communing back and forth with Him, my love is going to grow. Yeah. Just like when you dated. I'm sure when you and Brother Lady got together, the more you spend time with Him, the more you spend time with Sister, that love grows. Me and the other would be on the phone. Mississippi, he here Victoria. We going to sleep on the phone. You sleep now, I ain't sleep. No, no, we sleep. But that time of communion together, spending time together, and if we get that together, if we spend time like that with God, can you imagine what He would do for us? We would like no good thing if we would learn how to love Him like He needs to be loved. If we handle that and, and, and love him the way he deserves to be loved. Because he loved us so much that he sent his only begotten son. Yeah. Said so love, to learn how to love him, love ourselves, love one another. And even go as far as loving your what? Enemies. How many of y'all have a hard time loving your enemies? Woo, Jesus. <laughs> Amen. I think we all have yeah. we all have a part of that. Yeah. You know, and but we all growing. growing. We're growing in that. Mm -hmm. and, and God will show me, say, you you, you know, you do you be good to those. Do do good to those that, that speak evil and talk all manner of evil against you. And you know they're your enemy. But it's, it's, it, it can show you how you're growing in God. When you know somebody don't like you. Right. And you can go and do something good for them. You can go and buy them lunch at work. Or you can send them a card in the mail. Put a little chunk change in it. And you know, just let them know that you're thinking about them. But you know all the way down in your heart that they don't care for you. That's the love of God. But you're doing it not for gratification. You're not doing it to be arrogant. You're not doing it to be ugly. But you're doing it because it's the right thing to do. And when we learn how to do that, he said, he'll what? Make your enemies be what? Your footstool. He'll make your enemies be your footstool. Mm -hmm. So if you haven't arrived to that yet, right. that's one thing you need to put them on. Yes. Check. Yes. God wants us to love like that. Yes. What'd you say, sister? <laughs> we have got to do it. We've got, and you know, and, and sometimes people will get on your everlasting nerve. And even though I And here are some definitions down here at the bottom. The self-denying, self-sacrificing, Christ-like love, which is the foundation of all what grace. How, how many know what grace is? Grace is something that's given that you don't deserve. Amen. I'm waiting for somebody to say something. Amen. And that's exactly what it is. It's something that I've that I received from God. Didn't have to work for it. You didn't have to earn it. It was something that he freely gave us. Something unmerited favor. Somebody said the favor of God is on me. The favor of God is on me. <laughs> See, I believe it. <laughs> the favor of God is on me. See, you can't say it like that with an attitude yeah, because yeah. you don't believe. But I believe that the favor of God is on me. Yeah. And I walk like it and yeah. I talk like it. And I live like it. Oh, I speak like it. Because I And I 
do believe that's why God gave me that statement for the vision, building a church where the unchurched would love to come. Yeah. And thank God for Pastor Rejoice, she made these floors for the church, and God said, I'm going to send you to the unloved. Amen. I'm going to send you to the down tribe. Yeah. I'm going to send you to those that's been hurt in the yeah. church. I'm going to send you to those that's been molested yeah, and that's yeah. been raped, that's been abused. I'm going to send you to those that don't even know about me. But you know what? One day they begin to learn about me. You're going to build a place where they're going to love to come. And God said, if you build a house and I be lifted up, the people are going to come. What does the word say? If I be lifted up, what? He going to do what? I'll draw means to me. He going to do the drum. So it's not going to be me. It ain't gonna be you. It's not gonna be you. It's gonna be all God. All we gonna do is set the place, set the atmosphere for Him to dwell. If we lift Him up, He's gonna do the draw. So we got to learn that we got to be concerned about our brothers and sisters. And I'm not talking about in your immediate family either. All right. I'm talking about folks that's on the outside of the family. The highest thing which God has for his human children, high regards, which they in turn should have for him and other people. To love, to have the affection for someone, to like, to be friends. So if you want friends, you got to do what? Be friends. Show yourself friends. I've never seen so many stuck up Christians all day in my life. <laughs> You smile at them and you be in church with them. Uh, and you be up in the church with them. Uh, you smile at them look at you like you stuck on stupid. That's Pastor Paul would say. They look at you like you're crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, where's your love? <laughs> you say you got the love of God and you say it's like the Holy Ghost still by that time speaking in tongues. You can't speak to nobody. Ooh. Where's your love? We got to have genuine concern. For one another. Amen. True love. To have the affection for someone. To like. To be friend. The love of brothers for and for each other. So we got to have the love of God. And as we building the, the, the ministry. And we building in the spirit of excellence. And you know we're gonna love everybody that come through the door. We love, we 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 hug here at, at the house of bread. We reach out and we hug and we love. Let them know welcome. You know, we love you. We accept you just as you are, broke, busted, disgusted, whatever it is. It's in the house. God is able to fix whatever your situation is. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to build it in what? In love. Because love will do what? Hide a multitude of faults. A multitude of sins. It will cover. And that's what we should be doing in the kingdom. Instead of me covering you, hey, I'm going to go out and talk about you because you made a mistake. Instead of me saying that now, Dad, no, no, you, you can't talk about her today. No, you can't talk about my sister today. No, you ain't talking about Glory today. Mm -hmm. So what if she did this here? That's my sister in the kingdom. That's it. For many times, we talk about we love somebody, but somebody mm -hmm. call you, and there you go. Girl, I know she did. Mm -hmm. No, we can't do that. That's not love. Mm -hmm. So we walking in the spirit of excellence. Somebody say joy. Joy. And I think we got we kind of hit on this in Sunday school Sunday morning talking about this joy and that zeal. After we didn't got saved, you know, we have that zeal and we have that joy. But how we done lost your joy at one time or another? Amen. Mm -hmm. hey, I lost my joy oh, yeah. more than once. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. More than once. I lost my joy. But I tell you, I think about my day said, restore unto me. Yeah. Woo! The joy of my salvation. And I think he did that tonight when y'all came up. Whoo, Jesus. He said, it is it's rough and tough world we live in. All crime, disorder, bad things that can happen to anyone at any given time. Many Christians have lost a lot of their joy in the Lord as a result of some of them, uh, of the beatings they have taken in life. Mm -hmm. Having life circumstances beat you down and some hurt your life. Amen. All right. Amen. All right. Circumstances, sickness, lack of income, children acting crazy, folks on the job making you mad. Life will beat you down. Life will cause certain things to come up on you and it will cause you to lose your joy. And if you haven't lost your joy yet, baby, keep on living. Because it's coming. It's coming. One time or another, it's going to come. 
about in the book of Nehemiah when it said the joy of the Lord is my strength. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. I'm thinking about Paul. Sometimes I got to encourage my own self. And whatever state they're in, there will I will be what? Content. Be satisfied. Until God continue to do the work in me. And sidebar, sidebar, the Lord said, you're in the test right now. And the reason why you haven't been delivered, because you ain't passed you ain't the test yet. All right. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. Somebody asked God to do something for me. My God. Mm -hmm. Yes, God. And you wonder why God ain't answered yet. He so said, you ain't passed the test yet. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, just a sidebar. Okay, praise the Lord. I always say that this joy that I have, uh -huh. the world didn't give it to me. Uh -huh. And if God has really given you the joy, uh -huh. then the world can't take it from you. And the world didn't give it to you, it sure can't take it away. But you know what? Sometimes we let it happen. It suppresses us, mm -hmm. causes us to go mm -hmm. in, close those shut yeah, yeah, yeah. get in the bed, don't cover over head, try to say I'm on our screen, because you done lost your joy. You done lost your joy. I mean, daily keeps coming to me, restoring to me the joy of my salvation. And I, that's how we got to be. Lord, I'm going through right now, but I know what your word says. If I trust in you, you can restore my joy back. You can give me my love back. You can give me my praise back. You can give me everything that I need so that I can press my way on to the end to see what the end is going to be. But it will cause you to stumble if you don't know your power in God. Yes. Life circumstances will cause you to trickle, mm -hmm. cause you to say that you don't want to go to church, mm -hmm. cause you to say that I'm tired of the church folk, mm -hmm. that I got on my nerve, mm -hmm. pastor's preaching this and I don't want to hear it no more, mm -hmm. pastor's mm -hmm. saying this and I'm saying I'm tired of hearing that, mm -hmm. I'm just not going to come to church no more, I can't praise him like I want to praise him, I can't speak in tongues like I want to speak in tongues, pastor's saying this, I can't shout, I can't do this, baby, mm -hmm. talk to God, restore it to yes. me. Because if God gave it to you, the world can't take it away. The definitions of joy, great delight, gladness of heart, the happy state that results from knowing and what? Serving God. Mm. How many you get joy out of serving God? Amen. 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 I get joy out of serving God. When I serve my residents at, at, at work, I get joy out of that. Because I look as, as I'm serving God. Lord, I'm serving them. And I tell you, if I miss a day at work, they wonder, what happened to you? Where you at? You weren't here yesterday. But they, I get joy out of serving. But many times when we get in, in, in a leadership position or we get in and, 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 and the Lord lifts us up, we feel like we're too good to clean the bathroom. All right, all right. But like we're too good to mop the floor. Mm -hmm. And digging this rose, I was saying, Pastor, I got some now, baby. I get in here and mop right along with it. Baby. And digging this rose, Pastor, now you ain't got to clean the bathroom now, baby. Give me that brush. Because yeah. I'm not too good yeah. to get in there and serve. Yeah. Because you know what Jesus said? Mm -hmm. If I, uh, Jesus said, I came to what? Serve. Yeah. So I'm here to serve you. So if I can't serve you and help you out, I'm not gonna make you any good. Yeah. So we got to be a servant. Yeah. Say that deep abiding inner rejoicing in the Lord. Has there ever been a melody down in your spirit mm. when you all by yourself mm. and nobody said anything to you? And you riding down the road, now all of a sudden, hey, go yeah. Something yeah. down on in, in your bed just quickens. Okay. I be sitting at my desk sometime at work. And I have another that I share my office with. And I'm over just to type it. And I say, hey, it's time for a little shot. She said, hey, Shirley, what's wrong? What's wrong? I said, baby, nobody but God. God will stir up your spirit. You can be in a room crowded full of people. And something will hit your belly. And it, I mean, will give you a burst of joy. And it will give you a peace. He will do it. Said to rejoice and to be glad. Happy, joyful, cheerful, rejoicing, and festive. I love being joyful. I love being happy. Everybody tell me all the time. They say, you, you don't meet any strangers. I say, no. Because I, I can love anybody. I can talk to anybody. 
And that's how we need to be. And one thing in, in, uh, in this kingdom maturity, we have got to be approachable. Mm -hmm. I've got to be approachable. Everybody, all Christians, mm -hmm. need to be approachable. But you got some folks that are saying, you, you, scared to, you scared to look at them. Mm -hmm. yeah. you, scared to, you scared to speak to them. <laughs> and we can't, Jesus wasn't like that. Jesus was able to accept anybody that came to him. Everybody that came to him. Mm -hmm. And we have got to be the same way. We have got to be approachable. Mm -hmm. Joy is so important. Realize that God can transmit this divine quality right into your personality, and this will this will be his joy, not your joy. Once it starts flowing up into you, and once it flows in you, it's got to have a way to come out. Mm -hmm. What is it saying, John? Uh, was it 7 and 30? Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. It's the same way that joy, that joy is going to flow out of you. It's going to, I mean, people are going to see it. They're going to yeah. realize that there's something different about you. Why is she always bubbly all the time? And I say, ain't nothing about the joy of the Lord. They say, why are you coming to work smiling all the time? I say, nothing about the joy of the Lord. Because if I had my way, I wouldn't be here. All right. But the joy of the Lord. And then once God starts to release that joy into your system, you won't be able to help but feel it. How many of you know you can feel it? Can you feel the presence of God sometimes? Yes. You can feel it. And once you're able to start feeling it again, it will become much easier for you to learn how to walk back into that daily walk with the Lord. Yes. Without God's joy operating in our lives or in your life, things can begin to dry up. And we just talked about yes. this. Sometimes our lives get dry. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, church coming to church gets dry. It gets stale. Nothing's fun no more. Everything starts to become a chore. Well, I'm going to church because it's the right thing to do. And before you know it, you'll want to start to what? Withdraw. Backslide. From other things in, in, in life in general. You want to just back up. Because you don't lost your joy. And you used to love to come to church. You used to be excited to come to Bible study. But some things happen in your life that will cause you to withdraw. The joy of the Lord can really give you an incredible surge of strength in your daily walk with God, especially when you have to take take on some really tough situations. Mm -hmm. And that is so true. If we learn how to walk with God on a daily basis and ask Him to restore our joy on a daily basis, no matter what comes our way, yeah. we won't be so easily moved. Yeah. Somebody say peace. 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 Amen. Somebody have to keep it with the time now. Peace. Realize the Holy Spirit has peace to give you that he can give you in abundance. And you know, and it's and it's nothing like having the peace of God. And if you just sit still for a moment, you can feel his peace. Yes. I can sit at home sometime and I, I at, at the computer last night I had my head down and I could just sense the peace of God. And he said he will give you peace that will surpass all understanding. All understanding. I found out that once his peace starts to flow into my mind, soul, and emotion, it, it really is, as the Bible says, peace that surpasses all human understanding. All hell is breaking loose around you, and you're walking around in peace. Okay. Storms are raging right. and everything. What was, what was going on with Jesus and his disciples on the boat? Jesus was down in the hand of hard sleep, and the disciples were worried about, we're going to perish. He, he had peace. He was sleeping because he is peace. And if we know we got God in us, we can walk in that same peace. Here is how to qualify that peace is described in some of the dictionaries, some outlines. The presence of experience and right relationship. Our relationship has got to be right toward God and toward our brothers and sisters. Sense of well-being fulfillment that comes from God is dependent on His presence. The inner tranquility, the poise of Christians poise of the Christian who trusts in God through Christ. It'll give us a peace that surpasses all understanding. I mean, storms can be raging. I mean, you could have bills due. I mean, things could be going on, but there's a peace that, that that's unmovable. Mm -hmm. And you just know that God's going to move for you. Yeah. I mean, folks will look at you like, what is going on with her? And everybody crying and whining and you walking around, you are my peace. Take a money to bottom song. The quality of peace should be one of the main qualities that should we try to get to work in our lives through the Holy Spirit. Without the peace of God operating in our lives, 
you could become very easily rattled, shaken, tormented, and not right out of the game in the Lord. So we have got to have the peace of God. Yeah. When adversity comes, we'll be able to stand because we got the peace of God, knowing that God is on our side, knowing that no matter what we're going through, I've got the peace of God. Yeah. And you know what? He's going to fight for me. And if not know that he's going to fight for me, why should I sit here and worry about it? Why should I sit here and think about it? I've got the peace of God resting down on the inside of me. So you know what? I'm going to go home, take my bag, go to bed, close my eyes, and I'm going to rest in him because he's my peace. And I'm going to trust in him. Yeah. Somebody say long suffering. Long, long suffering. suffering. Kingdom maturity. Mm. Long suffering. Somebody talk to me about long suffering. Somebody give me a definition in your own words of long suffering. Not what I have on the paper. <laughs> My definition of long suffering. Go ahead, sister. I, I was going to say just, just being, uh, having the ability to endure. Amen. Mm. Thank you. And that is so true. We have, we have got to have the ability to endure. And last night, me and Dennis Rose, we was, we was working out, and, and I was trying to come out, hold it, hold it. And me and Dennis Rose were laughing because the pain was hurting. Hold it, hold it. We got to have the ability to endure the pain when it comes. And you know, we're talking about long suffering, and you know, Sometimes we go long suffering, we think about when we're going through it with, with our brothers and sisters in Christ, you know. I'll go with you, you know, for a little while. But you keep coming back to me again and again, you know, it, it, you know it's going to get a little thin. That's what we think, but we cannot do it like that. So one of the main definitions of the word of long suffering is referring to patience. How many of how y'all need patience tonight? Amen. Glory. Amen. <laughs> We, had to, we, we could be at the red light and, and somebody in front of you and she's sitting there putting her makeup on and you blowing the horn. Uh, you get it on the night. I work on that. <laughs> I have a very hard time when people get my way on the road. Please. Road rage. I got no him. I got no him. I really pray. I got no him. Road rage. I got no him. <laughs> He won't go to get out your way. Why are you be in such a big hurry? <laughs> I'm serious. Think about it. Think about it. You're going down the highway, and you hit this car in front of you, and you swing out that lane, and you fly past them, and then you get to the red line, you got to stop, and they can't just put you anywhere. I'm working on that because hitting maturity, I'm to be on time. Yeah. Sometimes I'm still late, but I'm, I'm working so on it. So don't fly, baby, okay? Don't, don't fly. It's going to be all right. We're going to get it. But it will, it will patience when, you know, and I, I've learned not to pray for patience. Because when you begin to pray for patience, you better get ready to go through some things. God will send you through some tests. I'm like, Lord, give me, Lord, I need patience. Because I am, ooh, it, I'm talking about Mike, I'm talking about myself now. I love going to Ross's, dress for this. I love going there. But don't go on Sunday, please. <laughs> Me and my husband, me and the other will be in there, and I have stuff. If that line is long, I put that stuff down, and I will leave the store because I don't want to wait. Where the checkers at? Where? I mean, y'all see these lines? All these people in here, and you got one checker. That's the same way. Walmart. Walmart. Ooh, but I'm learning. But see, I'm learning. And when I go, I can't be in a hurry. I got to wait. And I got to Lord, help me. Lord, help me. Lord, help me. Lord, help me. Lord help me. And you know, and, and, and now I'm able to stand that in line. Even if I gotta get on my phone and call somebody, what you doing? <laughs> what you doing? Because when you begin to pray about patience and long suffering, patience, God will put some tests in your way. You can be at work and, and you work at a certain speed and God will put somebody slow with you. Yeah. Yeah. You going 75 miles an hour and they going 15. <laughs> you type 45 words a minute, they type 10. <laughs> you can see 10 people, they can only see three. I'm like, Lord, so what God said, I'm giving you patience. Be patient. 
And you ready to go and you in the car blowing a horn. And your wife's still in the house putting makeup on, buying her keys <laughs> and her purse. <laughs> I can't buy my cell phone. But I'm fine. <laughs>
And you know, you never know what they could have been going through. You never know what they could have been suffering. There was a lady that came in here on Sunday, Family and Friends Day, and um, she was a, was she a Mormon? I think she was a Mormon or a Muslim or something. But anyway, she called Pastor Paul, and Pastor Paul was, was talking to her and everything. She was telling Pastor Paul some of the things that she had been through. So we never know who's going to walk in this church. We never know who we're going to encounter. So that's why we need to show kindness no matter where we go. When you really study the life of Jesus in the New Testament, you can really tell how kind he was always with other people. The quality of kindness will go hand in hand with love. If you have love, you're going to have kindness. If you have kindness, you're going to have what? Love. Once the Holy Spirit starts to transmit his love up into you, the quality of kindness will follow right along with it. It will become much easier for you to be able to be kind to another once the love of God starts to flow more into you and your personality. You cannot but help be more kind to others if God love is flowing through you. Yeah. That's why the quality of love has to be the main quality that really that you really concentrate on getting more of from the Holy Spirit. So we're going to ask that we're not walking in the love of God like we should. That's one of the main things that we're going to start praying about in this kingdom maturity. Once the love of God starts flowing and operate through us, through you to touch others, many of the other fruits of the Holy Spirit then will start to flow in a domino fashion. Yeah. Things will begin to flow in our lives. And you know, and just by being kind, you know, kindness will draw people. Yes. Kindness will draw people. We'll do the rest of them next week. Kindness will draw people. And as we're walking in this kingdom of maturity and life, we're going to ask God to, to just, just to help us and show us where our shortcomings is. If it's love, it's meekness, long-suffering, patience, brother, let's say amen. Praise the Lord. Help me, Lord. Help me. Those things that God needs to help us with. And, you know, we're going to ask God to help us. Yes, ma'am. I just wanted to say, um, I've been sick for the last week and a half. And I appreciate all the texts I got because mm -hmm. it made me feel good mm -hmm. to know that somebody Act of kindness. Yes. Act of kindness. And you know, and I show love to everybody. You know, and, and I'm down to be a member of this church. I don't care who you are. You know, I show love to everybody. And that's how we got to be. You know, showing love because you know what? It could be somebody that you come across that you just you just walk up to them and just begin to talk to them. They could be Come here. Let me tell you a story, and we're going to dismiss. One day I was in downtown Houston. I used to work at in Houston, downtown Foles, the corporate office. And, um, and me and my sister-in-law, Linda, when she was living, Linda Pickens, and uh, we went to the bus station, and we and we were just walking, and I was a member of Glory Land. We were just walking and talking, and this lady would come around the corner just crying. You know me. Hey, what's wrong? What's wrong? You know what I'm saying? I began to talk to her. The girl had just got raped. Just fall out and turn my head one the other way. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But I, I, the act of kindness, it'll, it'll, it'll have you reaching out to people that you don't even know. Yeah. And you know, and it'll have you talking to people in the doctor's office. I, I, I bust out with a conversation in a minute. Oh, man, what the hell this moment? But the act of kindness. And if I'm in a, in a parking lot, if I see an elderly person with all these groceries, I put my basket over to my car, put my purse in, and I said, let me help you with your groceries. The act of kindness. Simple things like that. Goals are long, long words. You see somebody out, you talk to them. And I forget what Pastor Rejoice told me, because I used to see her in Walmart all the time. <laughs> hey, sister, hey, preacher. Mm -hmm. Didn't know she was going through. But I just showed, I just showed the act of kindness. So you never know. I was in the, um, it just kind of became a habit. Yeah. Um, you know, when you're going through, and people say, well, you have a nice day, especially at Walgreens. They really tell you that a lot. Mm -hmm. And I turned around one day and I told the lady, I said, you have a blessed one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, she said, oh, my God. See that? No one has ever said that to me. That's what I'm saying. Things so, like that. Yeah. And it makes a difference. It does. It makes it a does. difference. It does. You know, it makes a difference. And you know what? That draws people to yeah. And we're gonna talk about those in the rest of our our our, our fruit. Yeah. Uh, how that goodness is a drawing magnet. Mm -hmm. If we do if we do good, goods what it's gonna come mm -hmm. to you. Mm -hmm. If you show love, love what love is gonna come to you. And it's a magnet. Mm -hmm. 
And you know, and I can draw people. And I thank God that I'm, I'm and you know, we can't take these things that God has blessed us with and use it to abuse nobody. Mm -hmm. Because you got many people take those things around and they will use it to abuse people. Amen. Is our hearts clear? Everybody, put your hands together. Please, our blessings have been I am a blessing. I am a blessing. Waiting to happen. Waiting to happen. You're raising us up. You're raising us up. I believe I receive. Hallelujah. I believe I receive on tonight.